Hello everyone, this is Danny from creatingawebstore.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install PrestaShop. So to start, simply go to PrestaShop.com and simply download the latest version of PrestaShop. After downloading PrestaShop, you're going to want to install an FTP client. If you already have an FTP client, you can use that one. If not, you can install a free FTP client by the name of FileZilla, and that FTP client can be found at FileZilla-project.org. For example, if you want to follow this tutorial, I recommend downloading FileZilla because uh, I will be using FileZilla in the tutorial. So simply click on Download FileZilla Client and simply download your version obviously if you're on Windows you're going to want to install the Windows version and if you're on a Mac you're going to want to install the Mac version in this case I'm on a Mac so I'll be installing the Mac version after downloading FileZilla you're going to want to install FileZilla and then after installing FileZilla you're going to want to locate your PrestaShop uh, download on your computer in my case it's in downloads here and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unzip it because uh, FileZilla isn't capable of unzipping files. If uh, your PrestaShop download already uh, unzipped itself, you don't have to worry about it. If it didn't, you simply have to uh, unzip it. After unzipping PrestaShop, simply launch FileZilla. After launching FileZilla, you're going to want to connect to your server. The credentials, of course, depend on your host. For example, in my case, I will simply connect using my domain name, isaveplaza.com. In your case, you might have an FTP URL. You're going to want to look into that. And the username and password are usually set up when you set up your hosting account. But in some cases, the host actually emails you this information. So you're going to want to look through your emails if you do not recall setting up a username and password. So simply enter in your username and password. And quick connect. After connecting to your server, you're going to want to locate your PrestaShop download. For example, mine is right here. Note that there's a directory that is called PrestaShop within the directory that you downloaded. Now, if you're going to upload the PrestaShop directory directly to your site, What's going to happen is when people visit your site, they're going to have to go to your domain forward slash PrestaShop. Now, if you want your store found the minute they enter in your domain, then you're going to want to move all the files from within the PrestaShop directory to your server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload all of these files and folders directly to my server because I want people to access my site, my store, the minute they enter in my domain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this PrestaShop directory like so. And as you can see, it should show up here. And when it shows up here, you should see your files and folders in this window here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to highlight all of these files and folders like so. And you're going to want to make sure that you are uploading to your public underscore HTML directory or whatever that directory is called, the directory that actually serves your site's files. In my case, I'm already in that directory, and I'm going to right-click on these files and folders right here, and now I'm going to left-click on Upload. And now all these files and folders are uploading. So once this is finished, I'm going to continue with this tutorial. So after your files have finished uploading, you're going to want to go to your domain, forward slash, the directory that Press the Shop is in. In my case, it's in the root directory and I'm going to enter in install and enter so as you can see it was my domain forward slash install and then I got this screen right here so here simply select your language and click on next now simply agree to the terms that is of course if you agree to them and click next and now here you will be told that of course is if there is a problem on your end. On my end, as you can see, I have a problem with my permissions because my permissions are in fact correct as you can see here. 
their 755. I can try uh, different permissions like 775 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick off recurse into subdirectories apply to all files and directories but as you can see when I go to refresh I still have this error here so the only solution here is you either get your host to uh, change the permissions for Apache or you can change the permissions to 777 which is what I will be doing as for the recommended PHP perimeters I'm going to leave this as is because this is only recommended it's not mandatory so in order to fix this problem here what we need to do is we need to go into our FileZilla or whatever FTP client you're using and let me expand this for you a bit so you can see things a bit better and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on each of these directories and go to file permissions here and I'm simply going to enter 777 and I'm going to tick off recurse into subdirectories apply to all files and directories and I'm going to click on OK and then I'm going to repeat the steps for this next directory which is the cache directory like so and same for log and same for the IMG directory the images directory so now I will simply change the permissions for males and for modules and for themes and for translations and for upload and for download and once you have finished when you refresh these settings you should be good to go now as for the recommended PHP perimeters if you have more that haven't passed the test you can always ask your host to enable some of these PHP perimeters in my case as you can see this is nothing really that major so I will just click on next so now you will want to enter in your shop name in my case it's I save plaza and you can choose your main activity anything that you like here and your country and shop time zone and of course your name and your email address and your password and you can decide on whether you want to sign up to the newsletter and then click on next and now you will be asked for your database information now the way you set up a database depends on your host right now I'm going to show you how you can set up a database with cPanel if you do not have cPanel you're going to want to look through the help files on your web hosts uh, site to see how to set up a MySQL database after setting that database up you're going to want to use that database login and password and database name right here and I will show you exactly how to do that and also you will need the database server address in most cases it's localhost but with some web hosts they actually uh, give you a URL for uh, that uh, database 
So you might want to look into that as well. And after that, we can continue. Once you are in your cPanel, simply look for the database section. Click on MySQL databases. Here, you will create a name. This will be my store. And I'm going to create this database. I will need to create a user for my database. Enter a password. And click on create user. Now simply click on go back. Now you can add your user to the database. And you can select the privileges. In this case I will just select all privileges. And I will click on make changes. And now go back. And right now this is my data. So now when you connect your application to your database you will need the following credentials. Your database name, your database username, and your password, and your host name, which will be localhost. Now, to access this database through your PHP My Admin, simply go down to the databases section, click on the PHP My Admin link, and then simply select your database. And this is my database. I save underscore my store. So after creating my database and my database user, I have this information here. So this right here is my database name. And this right here is my database uh, login. And now I'm going to enter in my password. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test my uh, database connection now. And as you can see, I am uh, connected to the database, so I can proceed. Okay, so now that my PrestaShop has been installed, as you can see, this is my storefront. And now in order to access the admin panel, I'm actually going to have to make some changes to uh, my uh, PrestaShop installation. As you can see here, it's telling me that I need to delete the install folder. So I will go to FileZilla here and I will simply locate my uh, install directory, which is right here. And I will right click and I will left click on delete. After deleting the install directory, as you can see, there is still one more thing I need to do and that is to rename the admin folder. As you can see, PrestaShop is giving me a suggestion, which is admin 6788. But since I would have a hard time remembering that, I'm actually going to rename it to something uh, different. In my case, it's going to be my admin. So I'm simply going to right click on admin and I'm going to left click on rename and I'm going to enter in my admin. And now what I'll do is I'll simply go to my domain name forward slash my admin and hit enter. After reaching your admin panel, you will want to enter in the email address that you registered with. And your password. After logging in, you can test to see if everything is working correctly by listing an item. Basically what I'm interested in finding out is whether I can upload images. Of course since my PrestaShop installation passed the test it means that uh, PrestaShop was able to write to my images directory but still I will try it anyway. I'm actually not going to create a new product because that's a little more time consuming so what I'll do is I'll just edit a uh, product here and I'll simply upload an image just to see if it works and I'll upload this image here and as you can see it passed the test 
So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com.